and welcome to Coffee with My Sunshine. If you are into thrift flips and inexpensive DIYs, then please keep watching. Today's video is in collaboration with a new sweet friend of mine, Holly, from the channel Hot Humble Pie. She has some fabulous DIYs, and I'm not even kidding, she shows some really cool techniques. She did my Trash to Treasure last month and really knocked it out of the park. So be sure to check her out when you're done with my video. You will love her. She does a lot of Trash to Treasure, Thrift Flips, Dollar Tree, you name it, she does it. So if you like my channel, I know you will love hers. So head on over and check her out after you're done watching my video. So on to this garden bench. I picked this up from someone on Craigslist. It had seen better days. It was kind of falling apart, really wobbly. Um, the paint was chipping really bad. It just needed a facelift and I thought it was adorable. So my husband um, power washed it for me just to get any of the crud off of it and any of the, um, the paint that was peeling up because it was pretty bad. And if you're new here and you enjoy these types of videos like thrift flips, Dollar Tree DIYs, Trash to Treasure, you name it, I love doing anything DIY, then I would love to have you join my YouTube family. Don't forget to pop in in the comments and say hi. And after it was done drying, I took a sander to it just to get the rest of the pieces off because sometimes when you um, power wash things it kind of digs up the wood if you go a little bit too deep so I wanted to get those off before I painted them and I just think these benches are super cute I wasn't too happy with the colors that were already on it I mean they were pretty but it just reminded me of Christmas how about you guys so after sanding it I just went ahead and took it apart and it, the screws were in there, but they were barely holding it together, if you know what I mean. Like, they were stripped out so bad. We used the same screws, but we ended up having to um, make new holes because there was no way. The screws just kind of wobbled around in the hole. <laughs> so I had no idea what I was doing, really. I... <laughs> I probably should have taken the seat apart first. I don't know, but it worked out. So I took it apart. I thought that would be easier to paint it because uh, the shape it was in, it looked like they had painted it all together. So there was red paint where it was supposed to be green and green where it was supposed to be red. It was just a disaster. <laughs> so then I just went ahead and cleaned up the metal sides so that I could spray paint them. And you can see there's a different color on there right now. I ended up going with this flat black because the color I had, I was thinking oil rubbed bronze, but for some reason grabbed iodized, iodized bronze, I think it's called. And it's more of like a silvery color and I just, I, I didn't like it. It wasn't what I was hoping for. So for some reason, my spray paint stopped working on me. It just got clogged, so I had to um, fix it and move on. And surprisingly, this only needed one coat of paint, which I was pretty happy about. And then I had to move inside to take this apart because um, we were expecting some pretty nasty weather. So uh, I just moved it inside and took apart the back. Then once the weather was all good, I went out and started painting the um, seat part of the bench. And I thought I showed the color of this. I'll go ahead and put it in my um, description box. I believe it's called divine blue or bluefin divine I'm not sure um, but I will put that in my description box if you guys like this color I 
after everything was mostly dry, I had to bring it all back inside because storms we were having this day were so on and off and really bad and then fine and it was, it was whatever. <laughs> I just had to bring it inside, put it together. And then after it had stopped raining and cleared up, I took it outside with my hubby because these things are so heavy. It's insane. <laughs> but I'm really happy with it. And of course, you see the birds already got to it. <laughs> but I think it's really pretty. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think of this color. It's taking some getting used to. I think it's pretty and bright. I just... I don't know. I'll have to get used to it next to like the darker wood chips and stuff. But it makes me smile when I see it anyway. And before I get on to my next DIYs, I wanted to put my open invite out there for my Using Trash to Create Treasure Challenge. If you're new to this challenge, all I ask you to do is use items that you would normally throw in the trash or recycle bin or something somebody else is getting rid of. And you want to turn these items into treasure, something useful, something beautiful, anything, just give it a second life to keep it out of the landfill. Number two, in your videos, all you need to do is mention my channel and my co-host channel. And my name is Casey at Coffee With My Sunshine. And my co-host this month is Heidi Sambal from Heidi Sambal DIY. I'm sure you all know who she is. She does some fabulous DIYs. Right now she is doing a summer DIY daily where she does a, just one or two DIYs, but it's every single day so that you have something to look forward to every day and get a ton of inspiration. So be sure to check her channel out after you're done watching this video. And number three, for the challenge, you need to list both of our channels and the playlist in your description box. And don't forget to mention the playlist in your video as well. Number four, put the challenge name somewhere in your title. It doesn't need to be in the beginning, just so that it's searchable and your video comes up if somebody searches. Number five, upload your video to the playlist on Thursday, June 25th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And finally, just have fun with your projects. We look forward to seeing you and I can't wait to see what you make. For my next project, I am just using this picture that we printed out of my dog and I changed up how it looked a little bit on my phone. I just used, um, it was like a cartoon editing thing. I don't know. I thought it was super cute. And I printed out some words, um, dog biscuits, and I'm using this container from the Dollar Tree. This is my inspiration. I kind of wanted to recreate these. I think they're super cute and vintage looking. But before we get started, I had to show you this because for some reason this is so satisfying to me after the paint dries on these. I love peeling them up and getting these huge chunks. I know. It's weird, isn't it? I don't know. Do you guys like that kind of thing? <laughs> Plus doing it this way, you're not rinsing the paint down your drain and causing clogs. So anyway, I am taking this container from the Dollar Tree and painting it that, um, antique or vintage -y red color. I just mixed red, orange, and a little bit of gray. And I'm painting the whole container. I'm just using this the back of this canvas so that I don't paint my tabletop. I just had to give it two coats. And as you can see on this one, it is really rustic-y, beaten up looking. So I'm going to try and recreate that with some paints. And I'm using this little sponge to kind of dab on the color so I don't get brush, brush strokes. And I'm starting with the lightest colors, so the antique white and some yellow. And this is similar to the um, galvanized, um, gal galvanized metal look that I've done before in my videos. but it's more, it's just adding a little bit of a vintage rustic look to this, kind of making it look like metal. So then as I go along, I'm just adding a little bit darker color each time, like the next color was orange, like an orange color. Then I'm adding a tiny bit of gray and some brown and then just blending because the sponge is wet. 
it really helps to blend it evenly. And I think it's getting there. <laughs> so I decided to add a little bit of some metallic paint. So this is what I'm using. And I'm just going along the edges where I had put some of the dark paint. And this helps to give it the metal look. And then I do the lid too. And then I'm taking the picture, kind of like the inspiration piece, I am going to cut out the shape of the of my dog. And this is my dog, <laughs> by the way. Just cutting out the shape and then attaching it with a little bit of Mod Podge. And then I had also cut out the letters. I left a little bit of a white outline because that's what was in the inspiration piece. I should have put these on a little bit straighter, but <laughs> that's okay. So then after they are on there with a little bit of Mod Podge, I'm taking that same sponge and adding a little bit of brown and um, like the antique white paint just to go over the letters so that they weren't so bright white. And I'm happy with how it turns out. I think it looks really, really vintagey and I don't know, similar to the inspiration piece. Not exact, but I tried. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think of this kind of DIY. For some reason, I'm really getting into vintage looks, like the style and decor. I just think it's really cool looking. And for all my farmhouse lovers, I decided to do like a white chalk paint look. So I took some white paint and dabbed it on with the sponge because I like that texture. And then taking the same words, dog biscuits in a little bit bigger font. And I'm going to take the same picture of my dog, but I'm going to just cut out the square. And I'm attaching the words with Mod Podge. I didn't cut them out individually because I thought it would kind of blend with the white background. And then I attached the picture of my dog the same way. And then taking this acrylic paint pen or marker and going over the edges kind of like a rustic look or an enamel look. And then I wasn't really sure what I, <laughs> what I was doing. So I just um, took the marker and got a little bit carried away and went around the words dog biscuits. And taking some more of that paint that I used on the red bucket and doing kind of the same technique just kind of bouncing around with the sponge and um, layering it so that it looks really really rustic i'm using those same metallic paints too and just blending it this one is a lot simpler looking a lot more rustic and beat up <laughs> But hopefully it gives you an idea or some inspiration to recreate something similar or change it up and make it fit your style. For this next one, this one is probably my favorite after the bench. I'm just taking this picture that I had copied on our um, copier or printer and I used the pictures from this book and I just love this book. I've had it for a couple years. My kids and my husband got it for me for my birthday because I had asked for it. I got it. I think they got it on Amazon, but I think the pictures are amazing. I'll try and link that in my description box if they still have it. Like I said, it's been a couple years. So then I'm taking this Dollar Tree sign that I've used for other projects and this dowel and some twine. 
and of course Mod Podge. So I'm just taking that picture that I had copied and just cutting it down to size. I'm just kind of creasing it so that it makes it easier to cut straight lines because I cannot cut a straight line to save my life. <laughs> Then I just took that sign and used a handsaw to cut it down and cut down the dowel rods so that they were even. And I'm just giving the letters a coat of white paint just so they don't show through the picture. I'm not sure that they would, but just to be safe. Then I'm taking some Mod Podge and coating the whole thing. And I like to spray the piece that I'm working with with water just because it gives me a little bit more time before the Mod Podge dries to slide the picture around. Then a little tip, I've shown it before, um, if you're using like a piece of paper, you can sand off the edges if you have any of the paper hanging over like say this you know cardboard sign or whatever and it gives it a really nice clean edge that way you're not trying to cut it off it just it's a lot easier to just sand it off then all I used was hot glue you can use anything to attach these dowel rods if you want to use wood glue or I don't think a nail would work maybe it would but um, hot glue worked just fine for me and you want to make sure they're even obviously and then I just took some twine and attached it to the back for the hanger and I absolutely love this one I know this is a little bit more of like a fall picture but I think it's so pretty and if I I think it would be really pretty in like a cluster or group of three so let me know what you guys think of these DIYs and I want to thank you all for your love and support. Don't forget to check out Holly's channel and Heidi's channel. And don't forget to join in on my Using Trash to Create Treasure Challenge on the 25th. Thanks so much for coming by and I'll see you next time.